I've been living in the yurt for two years and I'm about to go into my third winter. It just feels really, really fulfilling to see how little I can live with. And to be out here is so beautiful, like to wake up to hearing great horned owls or hearing the coyotes in the night and just feeling really connected to the natural rhythms is so beautiful. Yeah, I really love it. It's an off-grid setup, so there's no electricity. I have candles for light. I have a wood stove for heat. I cook on it in the winter, and then in the summer I can cook over the fire. I just charge my phone in my car when I'm going to work. And other than that, I don't have anything that I need electricity for. I get water through just hauling in jugs from the farm nearby or from a spring that's also nearby. I had been wanting to live closely to the land for a long time and had some ideas around what that might look like. Some different options, building a cabin or whatever, but a yurt seems really desirable because you can build it and then take it down. I'm not committed to being in one place. The land that I'm on is a friend's farm. I'm kind of tucked away and they are really generous in having me here. And to stay here, I do help out on the farm. You know, it's pretty busy during lambing season or if my friends go away, then I can do all the farm chores for them. And, you know, also there are just sometimes projects like shoveling manure or, you know, helping when they cut hay or things like that. So I do, I do help out as much as I can in exchange for being here because I feel so grateful to be able to just live on this land. I work a few days a week um, doing nature education, nature mentoring with children. It's really sweet and fun and I get to build fires or make medicine or wild food or shelters, whatever I feel inspired to do um, to teach them about nature. I get to do that. Thank you life in the wild for all you give. You define for me what it is to live. You hold us together in all the When I'm out here, I love to, well, there's a lot of projects always to bring in wood or water or things like that. And aside from that, I enjoy gardening and also making herbal medicine. I've got a few things on the go. There's always things drying or brewing or uh, different things like that. And also I love to play music. So especially in the winter when there's so much nighttime and there's so much dark, I play a lot of music in the evenings and then I also sleep a lot. Yeah, it's great. Sleeping is great. <laughs> Yeah, so when I first moved out to this land, I set up a tent for a couple months and lived in it um, pretty close to where the yurt is now. And I just fell in love with it. I love this place. It's really beautiful and it feels really wild and kind of like a secret little pocket back here. So I went and bought a yurt from Groovy Yurts and then came and set up a platform and built the yurt. And that building the platform and the yurt took one weekend with like 10 friends that came out. The platform is straw bales and plywood and some two by fours. So I just got stakes and drew out like a 16 foot circle and then pound the stakes into the ground in the circle and then filled that circle with straw bales and then pounded stakes in throughout the straw bales. And then on that put two by fours and then plywood on top of the two by fours. So it's a pretty simple system. And then also around the stakes, I have some rope tied that I cinched together really tightly so that the straw bales didn't push it out and um, kind of explode out of the outside of the platform. I really love this area because I get to keep all my special stones here, like sage to burn and things. And then I have all these tinctures I've made um, or are just ones that I've bought. But I feel like this is kind of my like herbal corner. And then this is where I prepare food um, and make tea. And then I wash dishes in here. My sink system dumps into a bucket and then I just take the bucket outside. This table is an old spool. So it's nice to use this because it's reclaimed salvage thing and it's really sturdy and big and I can put like underneath I have shelving down there too. So yeah, I really like that. 
So under here, I have a cooler that's built into the platform. So the cooler is actually touching the earth, which keeps it nice and cold this time of year. So if I lift this blanket, um, the blanket keeps the warm in and the cold out, but then I just keep my food in there and it keeps it nice and cool. And I can keep it for a while, up to a week or so. Um, this I strung up to hang herbs on. So right now there's some mint that's been dried, but throughout the year there will be different things like nettles and raspberry. Um, and then also in here, I've got some garlic that's cured that I grew. So then I can just um, keep it up there and it'll stay dry and dry out after it grows. And then the bed is jacked up on a couple of milk crates because then it allows airflow under. And that's really important to keep a lot of airflow in the space so it doesn't get musty or moldy. This wood stove I got um, after my first winter out here when I knew that I needed to upgrade. It's solid cast iron, so it's really heavy and it holds the heat really well. And then beside it, I keep all my kindling and my wood to keep it like nice and dry. And then there's newspaper just underneath there to start the fire with. So I shower sometimes, I do shower, <laughs> and I have, what I like to do in the summer is just swim. And really three th seasons I love to swim in the spring, summer, and fall, um, a lot, like every day if I can. And then in the winter and kind of late, late fall, winter, and early spring, um, I get yoga memberships and then I just shower after yoga. My toilet's a pretty simple setup. And there's a hole dug in the ground and then there's a pallet on top with a hole cut out of the pallet. So I have my own like squatty potty situation. This is my wood shed that I built. Um, the base is out of pallets and then the wood is either like I harvested this from the forest or these pieces are just salvage pieces that I found. Um, and then this tarp is from like a lumber yard that they use to wrap around the wood and then they just give away the free tarps or they throw them out or whatever. So it's all salvage stuff and it works pretty well. Like it keeps the wood dry and it's up off the ground so it keeps it nice and dry. So this is my tool shed. And so I have all sorts of um, saws and my hammers and shovels and everything that I use for like gardening or wood um, collecting or things like that in here too, which is awesome. It keeps my stuff from getting rusty. It keeps it all in one spot. So the season is wrapping up, but I, I have a few veggie beds here as well. Um, this window kind of cold frame is just salvage windows um, that I found on the side of the road. And then I've got like a, a hanging lattice for my peas. So that's with wood that I collected from the forest and also um, binder twine from the hay bales from the farm that I use as a string. Something that I love to do while I'm here is to tend to the land also. I have a background in restoration, so I'm aware of the things that I can do to shift the forest um, in a good way. So I'm clearing out the dead branches from the trees to allow more sunlight in and then planting um, native food and medicine plants back there like elderberries and wild ginger and um, fiddleheads and wild leeks. And so just adding some diversity to the forest, but also plants that I can use. And then also because I'm allowing more light in, I need to keep an eye on species that are going to try and come in and colonize like buckthorn, which is a pretty aggressive plant. So as those come in, I clear them out because I know they wouldn't have been able to grow without me clearing out the light. So there's a bit of responsibility in tending the forest as well. Living in a yurt requires a lot of maintenance. So there are things like making sure the tension on the, on the outside is tight, making sure that the top canvas isn't shifting too much, always monitoring the moisture levels and trying to keep the moisture out and heat and warmth in um, are a few examples of, of things that are specific to the yurt that I have to do. Um, but I think in, in general, homesteading does just take more time. It requires a slower lifestyle outside of the homestead to create more time here. I don't have car access, so everything that comes in here I have to haul through a swamp and then through a small tract of forest. So it's a bit challenging in that way to bring in um, even water or to take out laundry or 
anything that needs to come or go is a bit of a hassle. Another logistical challenge is the bugs because I'm in between a couple of swamps. So it gets pretty intense sometimes. And then also um, because I'm not, it feels like I'm tucked away, but I'm also actually pretty close to some neighbors. And so there, someone has found out who didn't like it that I'm back here and complained to the township about an unpermitted structure. So I have to either get a permit or eventually leave. Yeah. Seasons are changing, things are rearranging. I see the goose fly and the leaves touch the ground. I also feel like it's not something that I want to do indefinitely. There are certain lifestyle choices that I've made that have felt really harsh, and I'm ready for a bit of gentleness. So whether that looks like moving to a place where there are more people or having solar panels, like maybe I could start with those two things and see how that feels. We're not designed to be living alone. And so I think having people around would be really great. You know, there are simple things like if I had someone else living in a different structure nearby, I could ask them to, you know, feed my wood stove before I get home. And we could trade, you know, do that for each other. And that, I think, would alleviate a lot of the difficulties in off-grid homesteading. When I first um, built the yurt, it was mid-October, which is a beautiful time of year, but not the best time to set up a homestead, I now realize, because I had no wood stove set up and I had no wood. and. So it resulted in me getting a really crappy wood stove for my first year and I was really cold throughout the winter. I didn't have enough wood so I wasn't keeping it warm enough and I also would wake up in the night and have a feeling I should feed the wood stove but then be too lazy to get out of bed and so I'd wake up and you would like see your breath and it's really hard to get out of bed when you can see your breath <laughs> and you're like under the covers. So then when I went into my second winter I promised myself that I was going to have enough wood and then I was going to have a good wood stove and get up in the night. And I did and it was way better. It was like night and day. Fire has become my best friend and it just feels as though I'm connected to something that's true and ancestral and feeds me in a way that I haven't been fed before. I also really love the, the noises, the birds at night and in the morning, and also the lack of noise, the quiet and the nothingness at sometimes. Yeah, it's really beautiful.